The second scripture reading this morning is the glorious reading of the story of the resurrection of Jesus. Listen to this story now from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. And listen to what the Spirit is saying to you today through these words. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly, with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will the children come forward now for our time?
friend was traveling east of Atlanta on I-20 and he was headed home from the church for lunch and suddenly everything went bonkers. There was this loud, terrifying sound and a cloud of dust and he saw ahead of him a new car, late model, spinning through the air and it landed upside down in a ditch. And he and a couple other people stopped as quickly as they could and ran back to the side of the wreck. Surely they would find a scene of blood and gore and death. And he got to the car and someone in a medical uniform was down in the ditch looking in the window. And she turned back with a look of complete astonishment on her face and she said, there's no one there. No blood, no gore, no body, nothing. And they searched up and down the ditch, the fence, all around the place. Couldn't find anything. They came expecting to find death, but they found an empty tomb. <laughs> As it turned out, that car had been sitting empty and abandoned by the side of the road when it was somehow sideswiped by a semi and thrown into the air. Surely it would have been good to have an angel there to tell them not to be afraid. But you know, every time those witnesses drove down the road after that, they looked out for car flying cars without drivers. Sometimes we forget that when the women went to the tomb, they went with sadness and deep despair. They went into a place of coldness and death. They went with no hope and no anticipation of good news. This was a grave. And they went overwhelmed with sadness to pay their respects and to see the place where Jesus lay. But when they got there, they discovered that things had changed. The tomb was empty, the body was missing, and suddenly an angel showed up. Don't be afraid, the angel says. Yeah, right. <laughs> so you're looking for Jesus, he goes on. Sorry, he's not here, he's been raised, he's gone on to Galilee, where it all began. Go tell the rest of the group, go tell the disciples to meet him there. And the women were stunned, they were speechless. And scripture says that the women fled in terror and joy and amazingly met Jesus himself soon after. And Jesus gave the women the same message, go and tell the disciples. Now this business of rising again from the dead has never been easy for anyone to believe. It's not natural. It's not normal. It wasn't normal 2,000 years ago. It's not normal now. And all of us who proclaim it know that it's not easy to believe it. But it is a story full of possibilities for all of us. For us, death to new life isn't just about going through physical death and living happily ever after in heaven. It's about being changed, being transformed, being resurrected in the midst of our circumstances here and now. It's about living a new life. I heard a story once of a man who was in prison for murder. He had been sentenced to life without parole. And while he was in jail, he became a Christian and he was baptized in the prison chapel. And the baptistry was a prison made official pine box coffin lined with a plastic tarp filled with water. When I heard that story, familiar words that I've spoken so many times suddenly came to mind. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. 
We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. The prisoner who was baptized in a coffin didn't get to leave prison because he found religion. He was still going to be there for life. And he knew that. For him, nothing external changed at all. But internally, everything began to change immediately. After the baptism, he gave a testimony in which he said he had gone from being a dead man walking, a person already dead in spirit, waiting to die, to being a man filled with the new life of Christ living in him. So the question for Easter is this, what sort of prison are you living in? What are the chains that are holding you back from the life that God dreams for you? What cold, dark tomb is each of us tied to? Here's the good news. Jesus Christ, who lived and breathed on our earth thousands of years ago, was love incarnate. And nothing can kill the love of God. Nothing can prevent God's love from moving in the world. The rock in front of the tomb didn't get in the way. The angels took care of that. Guards didn't get away. These agents of the state, agents of imprisonment, were the ones who became dead. They became like they were dead, is what they looked like, because love was in action. The earth itself didn't get in the way, because it is the earth itself that God created and that God continues to love. Even death doesn't get in the way. Because as we all know, God is a God of life and of love and of abundance. Jesus, love incarnate, was raised from death on the third day because nothing, nothing can stop the love of God. So don't be afraid, as the angel said, to face the cold waters of your fears, because you will come out on the other side of the Jordan. Don't hesitate to bury what's holding you back in order to embrace the new life that God is dreaming of for you. Leave the tomb behind with fear and great joy, and you will meet the God of love himself. We are invited to a changed life today, a life full of hope and opportunity, a life overflowing with love and freedom, a life filled with the joy of the risen Christ. Christ is risen. He is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Amen and alleluia. I invite you to stand.